The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. As Obi Wan Kenobi once said, "Hello there, and welcome to Four Center presents Data Bank Dive." I'm Joseph Scrimshaw. I'm Ken Napsok. This is the show where we do dive into the StarWars.com databanks, maybe take a pass through Wikipedia, and we find something, someone, or someplace there. It's a little wild, it's a little weird, and it's often wondrous. It's those fun parts of Star Wars, and we discuss it. We did a first season of this on The Companion, a great sci-fi uh, app that you can all check out, get great essays, shows, and more. The, the first season of Data Bank Dive is up there if you'd like to go subscribe and listen. Joseph, uh, you have the helm today. Who we got? What are we, what are we talking about here? Well, it has been so much fun uh, to dive into... All of the different, just kind of more bizarre. You added wondrous. I think that's great. We got three W's, wild, weird, and wondrous. Uh, and, and looking for, do we want to do something that's old school? Uh, mm. Like like our old friend Lobot, right? Yeah. Do you want to do something shiny and new that's just hot off the Star Wars press? And what we haven't done so far is a character that to me is so aggressively normal that he becomes bizarre. <laughs> Today we will be talking about Tim Carlo. Now, if you think <laughs> that's a human name, just you wait. Tim is spelled T-I-M-M. That's right, double M's. And then mm. Carlo, perhaps you might imagine that's a C. No, that's mm. a K. K-A-R-L-O. Tim Carlo, mm. just with the spelling of his name, is out of control. Uh, he's, he's so <laughs> wild. He's so wild. Uh, and if you're just like, wait a minute, who's that? What are we talking about? Uh, we're, of course, read the Star Wars.com databank entry, but just big picture, Tim Carlo is from the first couple episodes of the currently airing television show Andor. He's the one who tells on Andor. So we're going to dive into that. Uh, here's what the Star Wars.com databank has to say about Tim Carlo, a floor manager. At the Colleen Saul Yard on Ferrix. Tim. <laughs> That's just so normal. Right? A floor manager. Uh, at least they have taken the words salvage and yard and made them one word, you know, to be weird and spacey. <laughs> A floor manager at the Colleen Saul Yard on Ferrix, Tim Carlo connects buyers with the salvage maintained by his partner, Bix Colleen. Bix trusts Tim, but while their business arrangement has turned into a romantic entanglement, Tim cannot shake his own paranoia that Kalen is keeping secrets from him. Bum, bum, mm. bum. Uh, the databank doesn't say bum, bum, bum. I added that. Uh, this is a great databank entry. W what do you think of this one? I, 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 first of all, I just love this overall. Uh, two music references here. Paul McCartney has a great li lyric. I go back so far. I'm in front of me kind of vibe of, of going on here and also at the 1996 mtv music awards oasis performed and liam gallagher infamously did this big like spit loogie thing like it slowly came out of the mouth. kind of disgusting i love liam but disgusting and beck in an interview said it was so not punk that it was punk again um <laughs> this is what tim carlo is he is so normal that he stands out like almost no other character in star wars and this entry just really cements that fact he's a floor manager he started a, a at work relationship with his boss it's an entanglement entanglement and uh his own paranoia becomes his undoing it's yeah. all right there and i love it it's the most bizarre spicy thing he's ever done is have a uh <laughs> consensual workplace romance <laughs> you wild wild thing tim carlo mm. Uh, we get a little bit more from Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia says Tim Carlo was a human male who worked at Kayleen Salyard on Ferrix with his lover, Bix Colleen. Oh. He was shot and killed by Priox Morlana officers after attempting to help Colleen, who had been detained by them after trying to get closer. Uh, so there are really only two new things. One, yeah. the just factual detail of that, that yeah. Tim Carlo wasn't with us for very long. He uh, was shot down by the officers uh, who were unfairly arresting uh, and detaining Colleen. Uh, mm -hmm. Very devastating. The yeah. rolling down the stairs, all that. Um, yeah. But almost as if Wikipedia is trying to make Tim Carlo more exciting, it's not a romantic entanglement on Wikipedia. Bix Colleen is his lover. 
How do you feel about that? Uh, man, uh, th- th- in keeping with the vibe of Andor, this is almost like a real world, real life, honest conversation. I think romantic entanglement remains the more honest um, description of that uh, situation. I, I think it's like set up top consensual uh, relationship between two adults at work. Uh, uh, do what you will. Uh, and, and factually correct, lover, that's absolutely, it's definitely implied that there's some, uh, you know, activities going on there in Star Hanky Wars. Remember? Panky panky. Hanky panky, uh, you know, is smooching, as Irving Kirshner <laughs> would say. Um, so all this is true, but I think she has, Bix definitely cares for him. It was definitely traumatic for her to watch his body fall to the bottom of the stairs and be in front of her. So I, I'm not discounting any feelings she might have for him. I just got the sense this one wasn't long term for Bix as much as it might have felt for Tim. And that makes it an entanglement entanglement to me. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, we're dating. I think, uh, mm. you know, mm. Tim says, you know, I'm, I'm interested in something long term. You know, I think Tim's yeah. waiting to pop the question. I think Tim is waiting uh, mm. to talk about kids. <laughs> yes. Yes. That to me is, you know. It's just, it's the difference in languages between he's kind of my boyfriend versus this is my lover, Tim with two M's, Carla. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's almost like a, if we were to cut a, a rom-com scene. It's uh, actually, you know what it is? It, it's, it's, it's Greece. It's tell me more, tell me more. It's all that. <laughs> it's the two different versions of the same story for these kids. It really is. So we're going to get into discussing, uh, riffing about Tim Carlo. Uh, we usually start with physical description, but as we get into this again, I, mm. I feel a moral responsibility to just start with uh, how we feel really about his, his choice to rat out mm. <laughs> uh, Cassie mm. Andor. I think I tip my hand on my my choice. I think <laughs> I think where I'm coming from, where I want to start with is uh, right. I, I enjoyed to dislike Tim Carlo. I think he made a <laughs> bad decision. For yeah. understandable human reasons, but I think he made a bad, bad decision. Uh, he should not have, of course, have been shot. That is mm-hmm. awful. Yeah, uh, but but I find myself having some uh, animosity toward Tim Carlo because of this choice. And I realize that I, I see all sorts of d- discussions about Andor. I feel like mm-hmm. the show Andor has been a collection of... Uh, bad to dubious uh, boyfriends, husbands, and lovers. Yes. Yes. And there's been lots of people, I've seen people being like, why does everybody assume Mon Mothma's husband is a bad guy? Maybe Perrin's a good guy and a little bit of Tim Carlo debate. So I want to mm. own mm. that I'm uh, that I'm angry with Tim Carlo, but yes. I know there might be some people listening who feel like they want to stand up for Tim Carlo. Where do you put yourself on that <laughs> Tim Carlo spectrum? <laughs> Wow, it wouldn't be something if I if I shot back. He did nothing wrong, Joseph. No, um, no, Andor definitely does. And I, the the the, uh, the commandant, by the way, at the garrison in Aldani is interesting because I saw some people tweet, "Hey, celebrating Andor." By the way, so I'm not I'm not stopping that conversation. They were like, "It's so great." Andor takes even side characters that might not we not might not spend as much time with in other shows, and even here you get a feeling and they said this commandant, you know, he had trouble, he had problems at home and I wanted to scream back into Twitter. He is the problem, (laughs) not his wife or the kid he treats poorly. He's the problem. Um, So I take that feeling into my conversation around Tim. Yeah. Romantic entanglement. I've kind of been there. The little sad sack guy who maybe finds his way into a situation that is uh, not as much as I want it to be. I've been there. And it does hurt, um, but you choose what to do with that, and you choose how to how to step forward. With that his paranoia um, is. By the way, his paranoia isn't based in is Cassian um, the killer everyone's looking for. Is Cassian a rebel agent? His paranoia is my girlfriend is hanging out with her ex, and I can't trust her, or I can't do anything. And it, it comes from that spot because of that becomes a, 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 essentially a class traitor, which is how I've heard him described by, by the folks, including. A uh, friend of the show, Alden Diaz. I think it's accurate about him, and this is what happens. And again, do I think he deserved it? No, no. It's not a good. It's not a good act. Act by the uh, Premox uh, Morlana officer who, who shot him. Absolutely not. But yes, I come down on. Well, Tim, you bleeped around and you found out. <laughs> okay, uh, very, very good to know. Because uh, I, I, yes, I feel, I feel the same way. <laughs> about the tragedy of Tim Carlo. I hope somebody writes a ballad about the tragedy of Tim Carlo. 
the irony being that he kind of did make his own tragedy by not mm -hmm. asking mm -hmm. questions, not being patient, not yeah. listening to the person he was in a relationship with, but making decisions for her that affected her negatively in the long run. <laughs> yes. Yes. And everyone. Mm -hmm. All right. So apologies to Tim Carlo uh, lovers, not big scaling, uh, mm -hmm. but I mean, people who love uh, the character, Tim Carlo apologies. Uh, we might be going a little hard on Tim Carlo. So brace yourself. <laughs> Here we go. How would you physically describe Tim Carlo? Uh, let me make sure I got a picture up of him here. Uh, dour, insecure. Is that is these are these physical descriptions? <laughs> uh, however you want, take it as you want. <laughs> he is uh, a Scottish lad. Uh, you know, a great head of hair. He got some uh, five o'clock shower uh, uh, shadow that shows up at three. <laughs> uh, he's probably shower as well. Uh, we know he wears socks and in space loves those. Uh, just kind of a, an average, uh, you know, I'd say a good look, a bloke uh, of average build and size and and, and uh, <laughs> seems to be good natured when he wants to be. Uh, but uh, yeah, God, I really I really love to not like this guy, too. Uh, yes, I have pulled up a picture of him and I, <laughs> I got distracted because he, here's the headline that this picture is from. It's from uh, Decider. Mm. Andor's Tim is the worst boyfriend in Star Wars. But he's also hot. <laughs> and I guess there's a bit of the problem with the. <laughs> there you go. Is, yeah. Yeah. Except too much when you, you base it on that. Yeah. No. Yeah. But, you know, he's a good, you know, he's a good looking bloke. Uh, and, and and the performer uh, plays him, James McArdle. Good looking guy. Appeared in Force Awakens. We'll talk about that. But yeah, no, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think if I was just trying to get somebody to picture Tim Carlo in their mind, I would say imagine a perfectly charming guy who you go out uh, to the bar after work, mm -hmm. nice guy, but then really starts lecturing you about IPAs. <laughs> that, that's yeah. his vibe to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, you're right. You're very, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah. And the whole time, just the insecurity in his eyes. Yeah. The other thing is, you know, if somebody's asking me to describe, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi, I could describe lots of things before I just started describing Alec Guinness or Ewan McGregor. Uh, yeah. If you really want to know what Tim Carlo looks like, exactly like the actor James McArdle, because there's <laughs> nothing else going on. That's it. That's the answer. Yeah. 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 And I know him as a, he plays a deacon on the, uh, the show Mayor of Easttown on HBO Max. Okay. Which I really enjoyed. And yes, he, in, in Force Awakens, he is the pilot Nev Leck, Calvin mm -hmm. Backwards. He's, you know, Star Wars fans probably know him from his famous quote, copy that, good luck, Poe. Right. Yeah. We got two lines and two Star Wars properties as two, as two different characters, which is weird, but also I'm a Game of, Game of Thrones fan. And man, sometimes they're like, cool, that cousin is now the king. Different characters. <laughs> Don't worry about it at all. Mm -hmm. Uh all right, so we already dipped into this a little bit, but I want to really dive in. For you, what is the magic of Tim Carlo? What does he add to the legend of Star Wars? I, I think, again, he stands out for being so normal, but the problems are just that. They're they're normal, so you understand them, and you see how bad they they, they can go. He is, uh, you know, in the first three episodes, he's a, he's a villain, and Star Wars needs those kind of villains, but he's a very realistic villain. So I'm immediately drawn to him. And, I, and look, actually, James McArdle's a great actor because I, I loved a lot of the scenes. I loved how he played it. I love how he played the, yeah, I can get you that part. Oh, we'll definitely do that as he looks over the shoulder uh, and tries to see what's going on with Bix. It all read very well. It all read very real, which is one of the successes of Andor. And I think you need that kind of magic in Star Wars. The normal guy who makes a big mistake. That's important. And maybe if some of you get hung up on lightsabers and wizards and maybe, you know, you just don't want to, it's too nerdy for you and you're afraid to love that part in Star Wars, you got Tim. He's normal. He might be you and he's a villain to learn from. Yeah, th that really is it. And, and he is just a guy so intensely that it almost makes me laugh. In fact, mm -hmm. it does make me laugh. He yeah. even doubled down with his name. Uh, his magic is that he's just a guy that that is part of what is fascinating about Andor is getting to have the time and the space mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. go deeper on the kind of real people of the galaxy, seeing Imperials who are aboard, who want to leave their station to just have a break from the monotony, all that kind of thing. 
he is just a guy. When we were growing up, some of the weirdos of the, you know, original trilogy generation that we had, you know, in action figure form mm -hmm. uh, were characters like Lobot. He's not a bounty yeah. hunter covered in cool armor, not a weird alien, not a Jedi, not a scoundrel, mm. just like mm. a, a, a bald guy with a computer on the back of his head. Okay, cool. Uh, Lobot looks like the most thrilling creation out of a fever dream of a thousand brilliant minds compared to Tim Carlo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, Tim Carlo is like the 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 guy who applied to be a cloud car pilot, but didn't get it. So he just wears earth tones. <laughs> I know, no, no. What's <laughs> funny is like, I know your relationship to the cloud car pilot figure, the one yep. that you own and the stories you would tell with that. You, you can certainly refresh folks, but it, it tracks for Tim. It, it's actually, yeah. So the cloud car pilot had no characters. So, and my brother and I were kind of coming up with stories in between Empire and Jedi of like, well, Lon's frozen in carbonite and... Uh, my mother also exposed me to soap operas, so I was trying to work things out, and I worked it out by the cloud car pilot, uh, making a, 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 an amorous approach to Leia, saying, hey, would you be interested in dating me? And uh, yeah. I, I knew how to act it out with Leia, because yeah, I'd already been uh, had this conversation as a young man. <laughs> yeah. Leia said, yeah. no. <laughs> no. No, thank you. I'll wait for Han. Uh, so Good it for is funny that, that my mind goes to cloud car pilot, and that's, that's a little <laughs> bit of what's going on with Tim. A um, little bit. A little bit. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, we really love uh, joking around, having fun, kind of doing a mix here on mm -hmm. Data Bank Dive of joking around, having some fun and throwing out some real Star Wars opinions yeah. as well. And yeah. uh, I think for my real Star Wars opinion, you really uh, tapped into it. One of the huge powers of Star Wars to me is it's this epic, bizarre, mythic tale that has real things to tell, right? And sometimes things like... Anakin Skywalker and Vader are so exciting and weird and different and fantasy that, that, you know, not everybody really connects deeply with what's going on. Right. Yeah. Here's Tim Carlo who falls prey to some of the same things that cause Anakin's fall. Right. And it's not yeah. as dramatic because he doesn't get scorched in lava and become a fearsome, you know, mm -hmm. dark being in, in armor who can choke people with his mind. He, he just rats out somebody he shouldn't. Right. But it's yeah. the same journey right he's he's possessive of bix he mm -hmm. it, he fears losing her to cassian fears they're mm -hmm. dating again uh but there's also that he's got that exchange with cassian where it's like every time you come around bix gets sad which is mm -hmm. the starting point of like well that's fine you're concerned about your partner yeah but instead of going to your partner and really discussing it you take this sort of possessive controlling approach of yes without talking to you about it bix i'm gonna fix this for you i'm gonna take an action you didn't ask me to take and you wouldn't want me to take the same way anakin lies to himself and says i'm gonna do this to save padme padme would not want him to do that and if he mm. had asked she would have said no don't mm. don't 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 and don't. so it's a very very different story from one of the most you know bizarre thrilling exciting central figures of star wars anakin vader to mm. tim carlo king of the socks um but it is similar things and it's just like yeah. it, to me it drives home that idea of the lessons of star wars greed yeah. fear of loss they aren't just for fallen jedi turned sith they're for all of us i know i think that's a wonderful point uh, absolutely part of the magic it, this is one of the reasons we come back to uh force center weekly and, and do all these shows and and pull the stuff from the screens and apply it to our lives. Yeah, we are all not going to, if we make a couple slips, be a Sith Lord. Um, might solve some problems if, if uh, for getting through traffic in LA if I did, but <laughs> it, 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 this is how it would apply. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I think for... Um, for me, it's it, it's on my heart to address uh, the men in, in, in the world who would make this kind of decision: controlling paranoia. Uh, maybe you convince yourself you're doing it out of out of love, and 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 this is uh, this is an issue in the world, uh, and, and and Tim represents that. So therefore, as good old Tim, we're gonna, we're talking about he represents some big things, and I think you're right. From Anakin to Tim, a Star Wars story. <laughs> exactly. We are gonna take a quick break, but first, I just want to you know let uh, Andor himself way in and as we heard him say this week uh andor's take on the magic of tim carlo is the quote your crazy boyfriend tries to get me killed and i'm the villain one of the best lines in andor in my opinion all right we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back to continue celebrating tim carlo
And we are back for more Data Bank Dive. We are celebrating wild, weird, wondrous, and uh, being a little hard on old Tim Carlo. Are uh, we? So- <laughs> are we being hard? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe I'm being conflict avoidant. Uh, you should not be afraid to upset Tim Carlo. Uh, what qualities of Tim Carlo, to give him the benefit of the doubt, um, I like the character Bix Clean. A lot of people really do. To give that whole relationship benefit of the doubt, what qualities of Tim Carlo do you think drove Bix to be in a romantic entanglement with him? <laughs> yeah. Um, not knowing Bix's mind here, but only going on what I can um, pull from the story. I Look, um, we know she's had a past uh, on again, off again, seems relationship with, with Cassian. I don't know the quality of um, uh, uh, any species on that planet that Bix might be interested in uh, Dayton, but uh, focusing on, on perhaps the men around there. Um, I don't know. The, I'm not, Brasso seems pretty good, but maybe he's taken, right? Or maybe he's not interested. Uh, <laughs> I think some of the choices have been far and few between and someone like Tim shows up. He is a good looking bloke. He does show up to work every day. He properly represents some sort of emotional safety. Um, could he go the way of boring every now and then? Yeah, but Bix seems like she's at the point in her life where a nice boring night with a good soul a good guy, uh, and maybe that's deep down what he is, is probably something she's interested in versus, um, God bless him, Cassian, uh, you know, he seems to have a bit of a reputation. He seems to be at times dipping into the waters of uh, being in there do well. So I could see her looking around, this guy, because again, she doesn't meet him in a bar. She doesn't swipe right on some space dating device. They work together. And trust me, I find I, most of my relationships have come from work. And I think most people's relationships actually come from work because you see someone differently every day versus out on the town for a dinner. Any, anyone can be swept off their, their feet in that situation. She was um, uh, not swept off her feet, just slowly uh, uh, pulled down to the couch to enjoy Netflix and space chilling, you know? <laughs> not swept off her feet, uh, but invited uh, to put her socks up on the coffee table. <laughs> yeah, and I don't want to- Watch some hollow. Yeah, I don't want to, it's not subtly, but I think anyone out there who, per, <laughs> maybe anyone of any age, but perhaps maybe over a certain age, maybe if you're trying to date in your 30s and 40s and beyond, you probably get what I'm saying, where you're just like, I remember my, my friend, Tim, he was, he had a great second marriage and his first one was a disaster. He was 43 when he was telling me this, which is scary because I'm now three years older. Did you say your friend, Tim, this is a real Tim with yeah, one yeah. M? My friend, Tim, Tim Blaney, who's a talent. He did the voice of Frank the Pug in Men in Black. He was, a, he's a great guy. He was, he was telling me the secrets of his second marriage. He goes, I'll tell you why she's great. We let, and they, they now have two kids. And he goes, but you know, after my twenties and the failed first marriage, I wasn't looking for a 10 out of 10, a six out of 10 on not looks to be clear, but like, what they bring to the table, what they represent, what they want. I'm not looking for all of the categories to line up. I'm looking for six out of 10. And that's what I got. And it's <laughs> and they're still married. They're still doing great. And it's still wonderful. I think Bix was like, I'm done with all these crazy hot guys on Ferrex. This Tim guy shows up to work every day and I like him. <laughs> I love that your rationale is Bix is like, I'm looking for a six. I have yeah. had too many problems with the tens mm-hmm. i'm looking for a six and yes yeah. not about physical appearance but about yeah the compatibility level maybe yep. the excitement level yep. yeah i mean that that's what i read between the lines is you know cassian uh does seem like he deeply needs and wants uh relationships uh, we have uh mm-hmm. heard in the text seen on the screen in recent episodes that uh, that cassian gets around um mm-hmm. he mm-hmm. seems to really care about bix but then there's also this through line like He's mm. always got something going on, right? He's always owes somebody money. He's always a little late to this because this exciting thing happened or he just dipped out of trouble for this. But mm-hmm. if you just give him two days or in 10 more credits, you know, so he does seem to me like the kind of person that Cassie would be so exciting to date when you're a little bit younger. Yeah. And after enough of that, you really are just like, I want to know that my boyfriend is going to be at his apartment <laughs> yes uh yes w- with decent amount of money <laughs> <laughs> not in trouble with anybody else yeah i want him yeah. i want to kn- i'll trade the excitement for some comfort yeah and i think tim carlo seems solid dependable that little apartment's pretty clean <laughs> yeah as things yep. go uh and then there is also, I think, this great dynamic that um, 
he he's clearly super super into her right he's the one pushing to be mm-hmm. like we were gonna spend time tonight casting even makes the you know, like hey if you were looking for you know a relationship without complexity you know maybe maybe you need to be looking for another relationship like yeah, yeah. i i for, from yeah. i have no idea how bix felt about it but it seems like uh there's no way that she doesn't feel very wanted by tim right yeah yeah yeah, I think the challenge for Tim is um, he knows he's option B. And I don't mean that settling. He just knows he knows what he is. He can only be who he is, a solid sock guy. And mm-hmm. that, that and if you have someone, uh, and again, she's not living this wildlife on uh, Farrick, said that she owns a business and she's doing all this stuff. But, you know, he could, you know, someone like Cassian comes around and yes, she, you know, she seems to get... Um, upset but yeah there could be a paranoia could set in of am i am i good enough am i too boring am i too simple am i option b and that's where a lot of what you're talking about the lessons of anakin some of this uh possession uh not the ability to not let go or just be honest about the situation could could start to take you over oh poor tim we're really psychoanalyzing this guy poor guy do you think he made some homebrews do you think sometimes she came over and he's like hey i made this i made this in my little kit <laughs> tim's <laughs> Tim's favorite, his catchphrase is, here, try this. Here, try this. <laughs> no matter oh, what it is. You, you think I'm boring and safe. Try the <laughs> spices in my <laughs> new space beer. Uh, my homebrew, oh, I made this queso. You're going to love it. Here, try this. And you know what? And and I bet it's a great day. I bet he's a great cook. Too. It's, it's got some jogan fruit in it. Come on. Uh, how do you feel that he has two very normal Earth names just spelled a little Star Wars-y? Uh, I, I, I love it because it is silly. It is silly. Cause, cause you hear the name first, right? And then the, whether you bring up the, uh, the uh, subtitles or not, or the closed captioning, uh, and then it's revealed, oh, it's Tim. It like, of course I wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, obviously some of the most famous, uh, Star Wars names are, are names you can easily find on earth. Luke, Khan, Leia, yeah. uh, Ben, you know? Um, mm-hmm. so it's, it's not totally, uh, out there, but, it is so aggressively normal that it yeah. fits his character of like the stable, you know, yeah. safe guy. And it just feels like I love that there's that Star Wars is a galaxy that includes Savage Opress <laughs> all the way to Tim Carlo. Like, who's yeah. this monster we're hunting? Well, his name is actually just plain old Savage, but it's yeah. uh, pronounced uh, fancy uh, down to uh, what's your boyfriend's name? Tim. Tim. I mean, like, I'm almost disappointed it's not Tim with a Y. <laughs> that would have been too spacey. How many how many Tim Carlos do you think actual normal humans named Tim Carlo watch this episode and were like, hey? That's, oh, that's a great point. There's got to be some Tim Carlos out there in the world. Oh, man. At least they There's have a lot of Tims. A- There's a lot of Carlos. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I, I bet Tim Carlo, uh, he is a, a wonderful account manager somewhere in uh, Ohio. <laughs> managing that floor going hey uh how do you feel this is the big one how do you feel about seeing tim carlo's socks should they have been weirder no um yeah yeah mm, yes in the sense of i would have liked them to be a little bit more dis- distinguishable so i could buy them on like superhero stuff.com or something <laughs> yeah I, I think for me there's something about that that it's a great moment he's you know it's in the morning he's been having a hard time sleeping he's wrestling with all this mm-hmm. he this is the photo of him that goes with the headline uh tim is the worst boyfriend in star wars but he's also hot he's wearing mm-hmm. yellow pants and a green shirt <laughs> and yeah. then just these beige socks that almost look like they've been art designed by a foot fetishist because they mm. they're like there's mm. little wrinkles going into the toes you can see tim carlo's toes yes. it, yeah. it, it it's it's yeah. so basic the environment mm. of uh Ferrix is so well communicated i can feel like the humidity coming off those socks i oh, i, I needed a weird line mm. i needed i needed some design to take me away from the reality because it's too real it's too real. And yeah, Ferrix being a, a colder uh, uh, location, right? And so they're talking about Marva, turn on the heat. She can't afford it. Uh, it, it. So the socks are very real. But yeah, it was, um, it was, I love seeing it. Cause I love that we had not just on Force Center, but the Star Wars world had an actual serious discourse over <laughs> socks for a week. It was amazing. <laughs> are they too normal? Uh, if Tim Carlo became a Sith Lord, what name do you think he would take? 
Oh yeah. Oh God. I I think it would be. Um, I I I I. I it it would be like Darth Rat, but it would be R A Y T. <laughs> so he might say, and and every and every time you you he introduces himself, people are like Darth Rat. He's like it's Rayet, <laughs> and like what does that even mean? Is it like we got Vader, we got Sidious? Those all kind of have some kind of meanings, right? No, mm-hmm. Rayet, Darth Rayet. Oh, you mean yeah. Darth Rat? No, how dare you? <laughs> I'm no rat. Yeah, uh, right. we were very, very similar. Uh, I, I was thinking he would take on the name Darth Steady, uh, but uh, <laughs> but people, but he would tell people it's it's Darth Steady, I'm like Darth Steady, like you're just there all yeah. the time whenever anybody wants to come over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. like that Darth Steady. Oh, uh, we could talk about Tim Carlo for a long time. Clearly, we're button up against the length that we go for these episodes, <laughs> but we are gonna make it personal as we always do. Uh, Ken, what if any Tim Carlo merch would you buy? Other than socks, I absolutely would want a, um, I think a, a Tim Carlo plush. What is the most like sweet, <laughs> cute, innocent piece of merch? A Funko Pop can, they, like they released a Funko Pop with a severed Ned Stark head. Like those can get serious. That's not abnormal. So I don't want like Tim with a blaster shot or anything dark like that, but just like it's a plush Tim, the floor manager at the Kayleen South Yard. And like it's just like give it to your two-year-old. Like, what do you do with that? So that's what yeah. I, mean. I would buy socks if they just put out, you know, mm. clingy, beige, slightly loose socks and said, These are Star Wars socks. That would get me. I would buy them for the irony. Yeah. Uh and then I went on an actual emotional roller coaster. If they made a solid, you know, three and three quarter vintage line, uh, action figure of tim carlo you know all the the bends uh, uh joints bend so you can you can pose him in his thinking position um <laughs> would i be would i buy that action figure and I, part of me is like no <laughs> i yeah. feel like he's spying on me uh but then here's here's what turned me ken i imagined yeah. the picture on the card mm-hmm. if it was the picture of him dropping the dime on cassian like literally making the call <laughs> at that phone booth yeah I, i'd buy the action figure because it'd be like kids do you want to act out the moment where Carlo brought down hell on all of Ferrix? <laughs> that would be, um, that'd be great. Cause then you'd want the package to come with that phone booth. Right. <laughs> even if it's, yep. even if it's just a three and three quarter on card there, you know, g- give us the phone booth in the back with, with uh class trader action. You could yep. say on the front of the card. I love that. Deluxe Tim Carlo there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yep, absolutely. And if you were going to spell your name in a slightly Star Warsy way, like Tim Carlo does, how would you do it? How would you spell Ken Nabsock? Yeah, I think I, I'd want a, a K Y N, a Kin mm. uh, thing. Uh, yeah. Sometimes in the past, I've used like my name backwards is Cospan. It's kind of a, a family. We've already always used that. It used to be my Twitter handle, if people remember, way back in the day. So I think I just do that Ken Cospan and flip the name back. Uh, and have that Y. You got to have a Y in there sometimes. Yeah, you really do. In fact, I'm going to change up mine. Yeah. Mm, I, mm. I decided if I'm going to try to make it look uh, Star Wars-y that I'm going to try to uh, help uh, help people say my name. <laughs> right, right. So I would do J-O, then a dash, mm. capital S-E-P-H. Uh, I go right. by Joseph. Sometimes people call me Joe. Most people are, are great about calling me Joseph. But it'd mm. be great if it was right there in the spelling of my name of like, Look, the CEF is capitalized. It's that important to the name. <laughs> that, it's that key. <laughs> uh, and then uh, most people are great about just Scrimshaw is spelled exactly as it's, you know, uh, mm-hmm. would be pronounced. Um, but growing up in the Midwest, there were so many like Schroeders and other names that had an H mm-hmm. that teachers saw an H where there wasn't. And so right, right. I, I would every every year at school be as Joseph Schirmschkarar here. And like I grew up thinking I had this incredibly complex name and it's just not. It's just so I would spell it as a SK. So people see that mm. uh, R-I-M-S-H-A-A-W. Just throw in a couple extra A's. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Stretch that out. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And maybe change the I to a Y just so we can be. <laughs> Got to have it. Gotta have it. (laughs) All right. We are going to wrap up with our rating. We like to rate the wild, weird, wondrous factor. What will Tim Carlos be? 
Our rating is based on one of the original Star Wars weirdos we've already discussed here today, Lobot. So out of 10 Lobot heads, one being the least, 10 being the most, how many Lobot heads do you give Tim Carlo? I mean, I want to turn it up to 11 and just have him break the, the chart, but it seems like uh, maybe it's too much there. But I, I'm going to say a, a 7. I, I really am. Wow. I, I am. I, you, you, if someone was to say, uh, Ken, you're trying too hard, it's too high. A three, a three is acceptable. A two is acceptable. He's so, he's absolutely one of those normal things we've ever seen, uh, seen in Star Wars. But we're not not only are we talking about him now, but everyone spent three weeks talking about him. His actions, his name, his look, his job, his socks. That stands out. He is uh, he's uh, a little weird in in the most normal of ways. So I'm going to go seven. You're going to go nice and high. Um, mm-hmm. I'm glad that you think two is acceptable because that's where I'm putting him. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally fair it's, it's, it's actually probably more correct but two lobot heads it it would be one because i think what's mm-hmm. so fun about him is he's so aggressively normal uh yeah. I, I accept your argument that he is so normal he becomes weird and goes all the way up to seven i think mm-hmm. i'd have him at one but i'm gonna bump him up to two because we did see a little bit of quirkiness here's what we saw mm-hmm. uh the implication is that uh bix came over uh, they had a romantic entanglement at his apartment is the implication that we all picked up on. Uh, he couldn't sleep. Uh, so he didn't get up and put on a robe. He got up, put on shirts, pants, and socks. He got fully dressed to brood. In the middle of the night. Because he didn't get ready for work. No. Nuts to that. No. No. You're right. He put that all back on. Those are his casual, just sitting around brooding clothes that he put mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. absolute freak that Tim Carlo mm-hmm. is. Well, we're going to pour an IPA out for you, Tim Carlo. Thank you for the entertainment and the discussion. Uh, that is it for our episode. Uh, you can find links to all things Force Center on our Twitter at Force Center Pod. Ken, where can people find you? Hey, uh, you can find me at Ken Napsock or just go to my website, KenNapsock.com. End of the week, I'll be in Seattle doing comedy with Mark Ellis. Come check us out. And for myself, you can find me on Twitter. Instagram, TikTok is at Joseph Scrimshaw. Links to everything else I do on my website, josephscrimshaw.com. But for now, I'm going to go put on some socks like Tim Carlo. This has been Databank Dive.